Dude. <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and I have trained athletes at the world championship level in six different sports and we're gonna analyze Joel Seedman and we're gonna start right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna learn how to move more effectively, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna run faster, you wanna become an absolute freak of nature, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. Okay, so Joel Seidman's one of those guys who just polarizes everybody. He's an individual on Instagram and he's got a couple different videos, he's got a couple different books. And part of me thinks that a lot of people's problems with Seidman is more around the fact that he charges an absurd amount for some of his books and some of his uh, different training programs and less so around the fact that his functional movements are out actually like very fringe related and some of the stuff he does is absolutely crazy looking and it can be very challenging it can be very skill oriented when you're talking about how to control your body and how to manipulate different loads what I wanted to do is go into some very specific factors behind Seedman and and behind some of the stuff that he does and I think it's important that some Sometimes he does operate in these absurd blanket statements. He makes statements that are just like, this is how it is. And if you disagree with me, you're stupid. Olympic weightlifting uh, will ruin your body. And I tried it and blah, blah, blah. And I think that does also polarize him in the world of sports performance and even in fitness. Not the fact that he doesn't like Olympic weightlifting, but the way he speaks in absolutes. And I think that one of the other factors that I've had with him in the past when I first really came on to him was he used his own personal experience with weightlifting or bodybuilding building, I think mainly with weightlifting that apparently it just ruined his joints. It just ruined his strength. He wasn't strong. And he used that experience to completely alter his training methods. And I think that it's sort of tough because I've been involved with training methods that have done very, very poorly for me, but they've helped a lot of other people that I work with personally. And I think that that's one factor is that as a coach, I think it's important to not come to training methods and training ideology through how it impacts you, but how it impacts large groups groups of people as a whole. And I think that's very important. It's a very important concept. And the one of the ways, the one of the filters that I like to utilize is how is this going to help little Johnny and little Sally who are 10 or 11 or 12 years old? And how can I get them from 10, 11, 12 years old to making international teams or to, or to getting NCAA scholarships or to playing professional athletics, right? And I think that that's a key factor. That's the filter that we want to be looking at all these movements through. So we're going to start off right away here where he's working with a, a major league baseball player some of the movements he utilizes are fantastic they're freaking awesome and i love this first movement he's using a glute hand machine with an offset row it's really challenging and this is really good if you've got somebody who does a lot of bilateral stuff they're always in a specific position this is a really good movement to help alleviate any inefficiencies that they have from one side to another and it can really improve any structural integrity and he does the same thing here with this almost like a, a dead bug press i guess you would call it and i love this movement as well i love a lot of the movements that he has that he incorporates the trunk he in incorporates that that lumbar flexion with a little press here i think it does a really good job for the athlete and it's a challenge and on top of that it's just different it can really be important if you're doing traditional movements all the time in the weight room to throw some crazy stuff at athletes and see how they handle it see how their traditional movements transfer over to some of this different stuff because this is a type of stuff that they might have to learn how to handle when they're in the athletic realm now this next movement is another movement that i love and and this is seedman and i will bring this up one of the things in the past that I've seen him do is he says, oh, I'm working with, you know, one guy that he was working with was tr a bodybuilder. He was becoming a bodybuilder. And then just magically over time, as people kept commenting, like, dude, this guy's not a bodybuilder. He stopped tagging the guy as a bodybuilder. And I think that that's one issue I do have with him in the past, but he does work with a lot of guys in the NFL. He's in Atlanta. He's in a good area. He's going to, he's in a sort of a hotbed for, for sports performance. And dude, he does a really, really good job. He does a good job promoting his stuff. He does a good job with these exercises and this specific movement the row with a unilateral position in a glute ham is extremely 
hard to execute. And on top of that, the hamstrings are getting targeted from an isometric position. And that's important in the world of sports. At the same time, utilizing lats and dynamic trunk control. This is a movement I've stolen. I've utilized this in the past. And that's where I have to admit, I have stolen a lot of exercises from Joel Seedman, And this is one of them. Now, next exercise. This is a movement that I played around with this because I wanted to see how challenging this was. And for to sort of defend my own training methods, I wanted to see, because Seedman has posted how hard this was. See, he's a 70 here. And I ended up taking out 125 pound dumbbell and executing this movement pretty, pretty freaking good. Uh, and I wanted to see what does traditional bodybuilding, what does traditional weightlifting do? How does it transfer over to these movements that are different? Now, I am heavier, I'm about 237 pounds right now than Seedman, and I wanted to see how does it transfer over? And it does transfer over pretty well one of the issues i had was it does help with trunk control and stability but if i'm targeting uh, my pecs or i'm targeting yeah i think then and i think this is where the methodology gets a little different is seedman uh, is looking for that entire body uh, aspect and also one of the things that he talks about a lot is it's, it's always this oblique sling stuff and if you talk to some guys that are into movement it can get old. It's like one of those things, it's like, dude, come on. I don't know. And then he also does bring up the isometrics and a lot of people will say, oh, well, how you have an eccentric isometric? And it's like, well, he is holding isometrically on the opposite side. So I think that's not a fair criticism to him because this movement's challenging, it's good. It's a really good accessory inside of a traditional system of training. And I think a lot of people should try it because it is hard. Okay, now on to this next movement. This is another one that I wanted to see when executing this, how can my shot putters handle this? How can my discus throwers handle this? These are athletes that are extremely explosive. We train full body. We do movements that are very, very traditional, explosive, you know, behind the neck jerking 500 pounds, right? And how does that transfer? Because a lot of what he has said in the past is that Olympic weightlifting could completely destroy you and it's not gonna transfer over. And so we tested this out. Some of our discus throwers were doing this with 140, 150 pound dumbbells in that position and controlling it pretty substantially. And that, that was like the first day of testing it out. So is it a challenge? Yes, but does this transfer? And I always think about this. I see everything through. Is this something that if I give it to a young kid who's 13, 14 years old, is it necessary? No, and not at all. The transfer of training is not there. I can get athletes a lot stronger through other movements and it'll transfer to this movement, but this movement won't necessarily transfer to other movements. And I think that that's important when, when you're running a business and you're trying to develop world-class athletes, there is a point to this style of movement, you've gotta be able to know when to use it. And I think that's one thing with Joel Seedman is that he uses it with world-class athletes. I mean, maybe he does use it to develop some youngsters. I haven't really seen that as evidence yet, but I would not recommend utilizing this with youngsters, mainly because it's not necessarily. It's not, it's not necessary. There, there's other movements that they could do that will transfer a lot greater. Now, this is when we're gonna to start to get into some of the, some of the sort of absurd stuff. And I think these are the movements that Seedman does tend to get a, a bad knock. And I think that the way I look at training is again, what are we trying to get out? What's the goal? If I'm trying to stimulate shoulder growth, shoulder stability, I'm not gonna utilize this movement. Um, if I'm trying to get somebody to manage to hold, you know, a single leg position like that, I think there's other ways to skin the cat. I don't think this is effective. And I, I look at it more like a parlor trick. And I do think that these are the style of movements that do get him a bad name. Does it work for him? For sure, he's got his own system of training. I might roll my eyes and tell people they're stupid for trying this because they don't understand his training system, but such is life, right? Okay, so here's the, the one thing too, is he does do a pretty good job here. To successfully complete this two eccentric isometric reps per leg, you'll need to dial in every component of your movement. Alignment, symmetry, balance, stability, motor control, foot and ankle activation and mobility from head to toe. If there's any movement aberration or form of dysfunction, you'll likely find it very difficult to complete. Additionally, to successfully complete this, your best shot will be using eccentric isometrics. In fact, it's the frequent and repeated use of 90 degree eccentric isometric so here's the thing that statement is absurd it's sort of annoying um, and again i've had people try this for fun and we're in a completely different training system and they've executed this movement and they're perfectly fine so does that mean our system's good i probably yeah now with that being said i think a lot of guys a lot of coaches get pissed because people see this on instagram and then they'll go do it and they might be in a traditional system and this has no place there the other thing is is he brings up eccentric isometrics guess what 
this dude is good at branding. Joel Seedman is good at branding. People now associate eccentric isometrics with him. 90 degree eccentric isometrics are Joel Seedman. He's done a good job and people get pissed about that. And it's like, take that step back. Do I get annoyed by it? 100%. Do I think it's absurd? 100%. Do I think that it's necessary in my training? No, but he's got his system. I've got mine, right? And it's okay to look at things that way. Now, one of the things that I think is absolutely ridiculous is this video right here. And this was just when COVID started to hit. <laughs> dude, no gym, no problem. Just do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got nothing on this one. It's just one of those things where it's like, what if you just did some bodyweight squats and push-ups and lunges and split squats and step ups and calf raises and jumps in place and pull-ups rapid functional pulses i i don't i have I, i'm trying to defend him on this one and it's just it's just sort of ridiculous and i think it's it's one of those things where he's trying too hard to be contrarian potentially and i think that is part of his his brand is he's contrarian for sure i have not stolen this exercise and i actually think it's stupid Next exercise that we're going to show is a sissy squat alternative uh, with one of his figure competitors. I think it's a little absurd, a little bit over the top, a little bit uh, ridiculous. It's more knee friendly and functional. Again, what is functional? I think that's a big conversation that needs to be had is, is what is functional? I mean, squatting to take a crap out in the woods, squatting ass to grass is functional, right? It is. It's functional. Is this functional? Having a bar through rings? I don't think so. But also you could argue snatching is not that functional because not often are you in a position where you have a barbell that you go overhead unless you're an Olympic weightlifter. Now it does transfer, but using the word functional, it's gotta have a, def a, a defined perspective. And I think like I could say, I believe weightlifting is functional. I wrote an entire book, Olympic weightlifting and sports performance because I see it as functional because it transfers, different movements transfer really well to other movements. So that would be my definition of functionality. This is available at GarageStrength.com. You can click up our weightlifting and sports performance book and course today if you click on the link down below. I think the functionality discussion does need to be had as far as where this would transfer to. I think maybe you could use this if we're talking about, you know, coming off the blocks as a, as a sprinter or as a, as a swimmer, but there's other ways to do it that I think would be a little bit more effective. And I think there's other ways for, you know, sissy squats to be executed that are a little bit more knee friendly and effective. Okay. So now we're getting into, uh, this is when Seedman did the men's health shoot. And this is also where I think he got the most hate was, you know, he's doing this split squat and this is, I wish it, maybe I should try this one. I haven't tried this yet. I just think this is like a circus trick. You know, he's got the magazine there and, and he's trying to improve his brand. He's trying to improve his brand awareness. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly how to play the game. I don't know what his gym is. I don't know if he, he rents that space or not. Here's the thing. This is the craziest exercise he's ever done. I, good for him, right? It's like, dude, that's, it looks hard. I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure that my guys that can jerk 500 pounds could do more weight than him, but is that necessary? Is that, is that, is a functionality perspective there? I don't think so, but I think it is important to just take that approach with when you're seeing his stuff is take what he does without getting too irritated. I think a lot of people will sit there and see him doing these chaos pull-ups and be like, oh, cool. Uh, this is really neat. But what I'll do is sit there and say, yo, I like the idea that he's got the plate on his knees. I don't think chaos pull-ups are really necessary. I think there's other ways that I can get some, some benefit out of pulls and out of lats. And he doesn't think that you should get to a fully lengthened position with the lats. He doesn't think that you should get the, the chin up over the bar and that's fine. That's how he feels instead of you know, negatively approaching it, which I have been a little negative in, in the, in the video here, but I think it's important to say like, dude, the way he's holding the knees is really hard. It's really challenging for the trunk. And if you can execute this as a pull up with the plate on your knees, then take it, take that as something that you can put into your program and into your system and trying to minimize the negativity. I know I just said, don't be negative, but here's one of my big problems is that as I sort of analyze what he does and I've heard him say things about squatting with your butt all the way to the ground can blow out your knees. It leads to all these pain problems. And, and that's where he really developing the 90 degree eccentric isometrics. 
The problem I have with taking someone else and taking their individual perspective of how their own reaction to a specific way of training negatively impacted them is because of his sprinting, okay? His running is just horrific. Watching him run, when I first saw this, it was, it was really painful. It's like super robotic. And the only reason I'm saying that is because if you, <laughs> If you watch him doing these runs and those pulses, it's like, I think, I'll be honest, I think when, when he does some of his movements and he's making his face and he always is very deliberate when he pauses it, it's like, it's sort of like this. I think that that deliberate movement just irritates some people. And for me personally, watching him run and then be like, dude, how am I supposed to take your your own personal experience seriously? You can you don't run well. So the, the negative impact from Olympic weightlifting might be just because you're not that good of an athlete. I that happens. I have a lot of people that that has happened to. Maybe they should get into powerlifting and weird isometrics, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. But watching this, is it, and sometimes watching him execute movements at times reminds me of when I hear people chew with their mouth open. It's just one of those things where it's like, dude, that's annoying, stop doing it. And that's why I actually like watching these videos that he posts of uh, some of his athletes, some of his guys that are in the NFL, um, some of his, even, you know, he's got the kicker for the Falcons. He's got the quarterback for, backup quarterback for the Redskins. And these are movements that are phenomenal. I think it always comes back to now is that what can you take from somebody to help improve your system? It's not about the negativity, even though I have been negative, it's more about what can you see that they're doing that you can try to take to improve your own training system. And this is one of those movements I love. This is another one I absolutely love. It's a great exercise to help with unilateral stability and strength. And then I don't really like that exercise or that exercise, but I do really like this exercise a lot as well is that he does a really good job of getting creative. He does a good job of testing these things out and he does a good job of, he is pretty clear with his, with some of his branding and some of his goals in the training session. And so I think that's a big perspective to keep in mind. He's doing a good job promoting himself. He does charge a lot for some of his stuff and he's allowed to do that. He does a really good job of branding with those 90 degree eccentric isometrics and he's a very unique individual and that has led to his polarization. Is it functional? I don't think so. I think it's again, it's important to try and pick and choose and see what movements he has that you can utilize to become a better strength coach or to become a better athlete. If you need help with your own personal sports performance, click on the link down below and pick up our Olympic weightlifting and sports performance book. This book has national champion Sam Mattis on top of it. He trains here at Garage Strength, national champion in the discus, one of the most explosive and powerful athletes in the entire world. If you want more information about sports performance-based training, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.